All right. <clears throat> Most excellent. Good to see you. Good to see you all. Cannot wait to get to this chapter. I've been excited. I don't know about you, but I've been excited for 24 hours. This is my absolutely favorite chapter. I hope it's yours too. This one and the next one. Some folks get mad at me because it's the same sermon every week. It's okay. It's the same gospel every week. Variations on the theme, different ways of saying the same gospel. And we need to hear this gospel over and over again. Um, this is the way you should do Lent, too. You should sit down and you should read the the Passion account from the four gospels every day of, of Holy Week. Uh, take, you know, a couple of chapters of the Passion account. And it, it's 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 the best way to... To get your get your um, lint mojo on. Um, uh, sorry about the lack of shaving. Um, somewhere in a box is my uh, shaving brush, and I can't find it. So, yeah, it's no shave November, you see. No, literally, I don't know where my shaving brush is. It's in one of the thousand boxes. I had planned everything else but shaving. Didn't plan shaving well. All right. Those of you who are asking about Thor, he's over there sleeping. Uh, he had a bad night, bad day yesterday. Um, he did drink some water this morning. Um, if he doesn't start eating, I'm going to have to take him into the, the vet. But uh, we're going to try some, uh, uh, like a like a uh, hamburger patty that's been sort of uh, uh, washed. And um, we're going to um, mix it in with some rice later on and I'm, I'm sure we, it, it'll be real food um, just that he's rejecting his dog food isn't a, necessarily the case but he did he got sick last night and so uh, prayers for the pooch um, prayers for the pooch all right let's get to um, John chapter 18 there we go uh, after Jesus said these words, um, he went out with his disciples, Peron to uh, Camaro, um, uh, 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 uh across the, the, the sort of ravine of the Kidron where there was a garden which he and his disciples went in. So this is the night in which he was betrayed. He goes to this garden and the intention of him in this garden is to um, is to pray. His plan is to pray. Um, prayers for the pooch. All right. Um, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, and he and his disciples entered. Now, now Judas uh, also knew that place. And Judas is described as the one who what uh, who would betray him, um, the one betraying him, and I, I think we should boo whenever there's a Judas sighting. I I, I do believe this, and I, I think you should boo. I, other team um, betrayer. Uh, it's not that there's somebody who has to betray Jesus, and the lot falls to Judas, and oh how sorry we are for him. Um, it's that. It's that Judas betrays Jesus, that God knows that's going to happen, and then God tells us it's going to happen. That's the way it goes down, honestly. So, like, if you're looking at it like, well, somebody has to betray Jesus, and whoa, that it's, that it's, that it's Judas. That's not how this goes down. Um, very clearly, Judas is, betrays Jesus. He hands him over for, for money. For money. Now, he later feels sorry about it afterwards, but he doesn't repent of it, because to repent of it would be to go to Jesus and ask Jesus for forgiveness. He doesn't do that. 
sorry is great, but it's not Christian repentance. Christian repentance has two parts. First, that we are contrite, there's your sorry, but also that we believe that we have a Savior who forgives us of that sin. Um, so faith is a huge, huge part of Christian repentance. in the Lutheran Study Bible. Duh. I don't know how that got closed. Let me get up to the right. There we go. Um, I like how the, the Study Bible makes a note to tell you that this was a sort of a, is a, um, a water course. It was dry except for the rainy season. Um, not altogether the best place. It was a good place to, to, to cross but not a good place to like fish or anything like that. Um, Judas, who was to betray him, also knew the place. For Jesus often met there with his disciples. So he goes to a place that he's been to before with disciples. He sent Judas out. If he was trying to avoid Judas, he would go to a place that Judas doesn't know. But he goes to a place where he's not hiding anything. Um, he's not hiding anything. This is the way I like to uh, to do stuff in church. Before I do something, I announce it in advance for like 10 months. I'm going to do this. Sometimes I have like things that I, I attempt to do, but usually, usually if it's a big change, I'll start asking people to pray for it about 10 months, a year in advance. Um, hey, let's start praying about an associate. Hey, let's start praying about this. Let's start praying about that. Um, no, no sort of, um, nothing hidden, nothing, no, no surprises. Um, some things, um, um, you know, nothing, no big surprises, nothing like that. All of it is just simply here it is. And what usually happens is, um, um, is that somebody's like, well, I can't believe you're going to do this. Well, I, I, I pray, you know, we prayed, we prayed 10 months about it, didn't we? I mean, we're, we we're praying about it. Um, uh, here, Jesus goes to the place where he said he was, where he often went. He's not trying to hide from, from anybody. He's not doing anything in secret. He's not up to no good, even though it's night. The people who are doing no good at night are Judas and the, and, the, and the troops. Back to the text. Um, so Judas, verse 3. So Judas, taking with him a cohort. Now, um, we sort of need to understand what a cohort is um and and this is sort of really important in order to sort of grasp this um a cohort is a tenth of a legion and so if a legion um um 600 men, a tenth of a legion, if a legion is 6,000 men, then a cohort is 600 men. Now, um, that number you'll see from BDAG can vary. But, I mean, just do the math on that. Um, we have this picture that, like, 15 guards go out. This is overkill. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like overkill. It's overdone. So I don't know if it was actually 600 men, but I do know that it was more men than was necessary for procuring 12 disciples, uh, 11, and anybody else who was straggling along, and Jesus. I mean, just sort of take that in. I mean, not a, a small detachment. 
this was a significant amount of 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 military force that's brought out to seize Jesus. And you know, if you're going to do this to God, you need a lot of men. I mean, if if you're going to do bad things to God, you need as many men as you possibly can get. So so they bring over these this this cohort of um of soldiers. 600 men. So let's say that it's not 600 men. Let's say it's less than 600 men. Let's say that it's a sixth uh, a tenth of that. 60 men. Still overkill. I used to teach this as around 100 men. Overkill. But that's what you need if you're going to go against God. You need as many men as possible. We're going to need a bigger boat. You got a big shark, you need a bigger boat. Don't miss this. Do not miss this. I do not think I like the way Big Sur looks. I just, it's very cartoony. I'm not a big fan. So this detachment, this Stavron, um, from the from the um, from the chief priests and out of the Pharisees, uh, servants of the Pharisees, um, they came uh, with Fanon um, lamps and Lampadon uh, swords. Uh, sorry, torches. So lamps, torches, um, weapons, weapons. Again, 600 men. Armus is the Latin arms. 600 men along with torches and swords and the like. Lestico. <laughs> but Peter has a sword. Yeah, one sword versus, let's talk about bringing a knife to a gunfight. Crazy. But again, this is what it, this is what it sounds like when doves cry. Um, This is what it sounds like when you go to war with, um, with God. And so Jesus, knowing all that was about to happen, He exhale thin. He goes forward. He greets them. This is the way God engages people. God doesn't wait for you to come to him. God comes to you. So Jesus doesn't be like, look over there. It's Jesus. I saw he went that way because it's dark. You can't see. Okay. It's dark. You can't see. They're in a confined space. There's a lot of people there. There's a lot of people there. And they, 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 they can't <laughs> pitchforks. They were armed with pitchforks and four-page single-space letters back and front. And so you, they're armed to the teeth. And you got this moment where They're looking for Jesus. But before they even say who they're looking for, he steps forward. He knows everything that's going to happen to him. And he still steps forward. And he steps forward to save you and me. That's what this is about. Saving you and me. If you would be saved, this is how it's going to go down. Tina Zateta. Whom do you seek? Whom are you seeking? Who are you looking for? (laughs) 
not. I saw you went that way. And remember, Judas is there one for location and two for identification. It's dark. So they need the GPS coordinates of the Son of God, and they need him, they need Judas to point the Son of God out. They answered him, Yesun ton Nazarai on. Um, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, Ego Emi. Now, again, I've told you what this phrase means. I've said it many times in this gospel. We've had it many times in this gospel. I've, I've told you what it means many times. We've talked about it. We've um, we've done it, and I'm going to wait, and you're going to tell me what it means. Because this is very important to understanding what happens next. And it is not, I'm the guy. It's That's not what this means. That's not what this means. Cheryl's got it on Facebook. It means, literally, I am. It does not only mean, I'm the guy. No, this is, I'm God. I'm God. I am. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. I am. You tell them, I am sent them. I am who I am. It is not only... I'm the guy. And there, I'm going to disagree with the uh, study Bible. That's okay. Love the study Bible. Nice people around the study Bible. Um, threefold repetition of the I am in verses 5, 6, and 8. An expression of self-identification. Okay, but there's more than that. There's more than that going on here. And it's evident by what happens next. Judas, the one betraying him, was, was standing with them. This is important. Whose side is Judas on? Who's he standing with? In my former parish, I used to joke that um, I was cool until all the different people who were mad at me for all the different things, realized that they had one thing in common, was that they were all mad at me. And um, one voters meeting, everybody who was mad at me for anything all showed up and sat next to each other. Um, it was still a good meeting. It was a gift. Um, the... Um, here, you've got the forces of darkness, a cohort of servant uh, of, of 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 guards, soldiers, armed, armists. They got arms. They're all with the chief priests and the scribes and the servants of the high priest, and and Judas is. And, and, oh, and you've got the disciples, and Jesus, and Judas is standing not with Jesus but with them. But with them. So when Jesus said to them, Ego a me, they went back and, um, they sort of, drew back and they fell to the ground. This is by far my favorite part of the gospel. 
Um, if you want to understand both Jesus and humanity, this is the moment. He knows why he's there, and he's there to save you and me. He knows what's going on. No, Newman, I don't want all the troublemakers showing up at the same time. But you know what? When they do, it's all gift. Um, but I want you to uh, stay with me on this. Just, just, just sort of stay with me on this for a little bit. This moment, this magic moment, no, this moment is, is, um, is, oh, Tyler's in the house. Excellent. Hi, Tyler. Um, this, this moment where he says, I am. My kid, my, you can hear the kids in the background singing songs. Is one of the most profound moments of our humanity in the Gospels. He says, I am. I'm God. I am who my, they am. And they draw back and the force of Almighty God in this very strange verse knocks them all over. And what occurs is some sort of dominoes where they step back and blah, 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 they all fall down. They all fall down. They step back and blah, 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 they all fall down. All 600 of them. One guy versus 600. One of the most profound 21st century pictures was a guy standing in front of a tank in China. This is one guy versus like 600. He says his name, I am. And they all fall down. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. They all go down. I don't even know how to type that sound. But they all go down. And the, and the thing that blows my mind here, um, no you don't, Lestico. No you don't. No you don't. I don't, I don't need a Dodger thing. But uh, a sidebar, the Mets now have the guy from Billions as their um, owner. And so, um, yeah. They all fall down. And when they all fall down, you would think that would be the end of it. If you were going to arrest someone and you got near to them, and when you got near to them, they, the, the force of their words knocked you back on your keister. You would think that that would be the end of it. That that would be the end of it. That would be, that would be the end of it. There'd be nothing else. But that's not what happens. The force of Jesus' divinity, I am, causes them to step back and fall on their faces. Our butts. They fell to the ground. But what do they do? You would think they would go, yeah, this was a bad idea. We made a mistake! But they don't. They're still on the ground. Verse 6. So Jesus said to them, um, Again, Jesus answered them, Tina zeteta, Whom do you seek? 
And obviously from the ground, they respond, Jesus of Nazareth. And he answered, Upon Umen, I said to y'all, I am. If you seek me, let these men go. Let these go. So again, his main concern is saving people. Yeah, Mark, we're the soldiers. That's a very, 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 very true statement. We're the soldiers. This is about saving you. And even as he's seized, he's like, let them go. So what do they do? They pick themselves back up and say, we're here to get you, Jesus. And his response is, look, I told you I'm him. I told you I am. If you seek me, then let these kids go. Let these other ones go. This was to fulfill the word which was spoken. Of those given to me, I have lost not one. This is original sin. This is the stupidity of sin. I'm with, with Pastor Lustico on this one. This is the stupidity of sin. They go to seize the Son of God. They are undone by the force of his words. They are thrown back onto, their, onto the ground by the utter sheer power that is the Son of God. And they pick themselves back up again and they do the evil that they intended to do. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. But if you think this is strange, and it is strange, this is us. We get knocked down, but we get up again. And we, we, we keep fighting God. All our lives, we fight God. Our life is, and we're the villain. But we think he's the villain. And if he just was the God that we needed him to be, if he was just the God that we controlled him to be, if he was just the God that we want him to be, we would never have a problem with him. But he's not, so we have to kill him. Look, you would think that they would get knocked down and they would be like, ooh. Christ be my leader by night as by day. That they would start singing to him. You know what? I'm on board with this. But no matter what God flings at us, this was this was this was Jonah's problem. No matter what God uh, throws at us, we might repent for a time, but the extent of our repentance extends till we forget, and we're right back to where we were when we started. He could throw a pandemic at us. He could throw a crazy election at us. We don't repent. We just dig our heels in. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to fight you. I will fight you, God. There it is. There it is. There it is. If you want to know your situation, understand that you fight God your whole life. And you lose. And, it, and you don't ever change. You're still fighting him until you die. And then you don't fight him anymore. I don't fight him. I love God. Well, I, I, I know you love God. And you don't. Okay? You 100% love God with your whole heart. And you 100% don't. True story. True story. Your whole life. And the only thing that saves is the suffering and death of Christ. 
the only thing that saves is the suffering and death of Christ. That's it. That's all. That's only. All right. Not going to finish the pericope here because um, I don't want to, I think I want to handle um, Peter all by himself. Um, Remember to go to higherthings.org slash giving and give today. A tax-deductible gift to Higher Things keeps us in, on your YouTube and on your um, Facebook and my HT. Uh, tomorrow is Fireside Chat Day. Remember, that's the time in which we gather together and we we sit down and we have a little conversation um, about whatever it is that is interesting you, whatever it is that you're talking about, whatever it is that it, that's bugging you. You bring the questions tomorrow and I will bring the answers. Or not. But that is at um, higher things dot, uh, uh, myht.higherthings.org. myht.higherthings.org for tomorrow's Fireside Thursday chat. All right. Have a blessed day. I'll see you tomorrow. Same HT time. Same HT channel.